Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy help define our contemporary world. My guest today, in a sense, holds the key to the indigenization of our armed forces and weapon systems. He's had a long and distinguished career as a scientist with the DRDO, the Defense Research and Development Organization. He is today the secretary uh, in the Ministry of Defense, looking after research and development, and also an advisor to the defense minister. Uh, the notion of indigenization has uh, achieved uh, far greater significance than it did uh, in, in the more distant past, uh, because the collapse of the Soviet Union sort of threatened, uh, put in question our ability to access uh, spares and, and the new weapon systems, uh, the post-nuclear um, uh, explosion sanctions, further brought emphasis uh, to this issue. The DRDO has been under a huge amount of uh, criticism and scrutiny for failing to deliver. And to respond to that and to, to share his insights, vision and wisdom uh, is Mr. Um, M. Natarajan. Welcome, sir, to the program. Thank you, sir. Um, you have been a scientist, an active scientist, and your major sort of your pet project was the um, battle tank, uh, and you spent a long time working on that. And now you find yourself here in Delhi, more or less, as, you know, to, to, to forgive the euphemism, a, a babu looking at uh, administering things from being a hands-on scientist. And uh, from the time you took over, it's been a, a, a time of particular uh, pressure, scrutiny, attack, and, and people are complaining about <laughs> the DRDO. Um, you know, there are talk about, um, you know, huge cost overruns, delays. Well, you know, before we go into some of the details, what would be a sort of a few lines of defense, if any, that you have in, in terms of your contribution to the defense ministry and the defense industry? <laughs> Well, the first thing I want to say is, um, if we have attracted a uh, lot of media attention, that itself is a sense of satisfaction to me. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter, notwithstanding the criticism, because that means we are emerging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Otherwise, we, people will not pay that kind of an attention. Uh, answering your specific question, I would certainly say that we have a very important role, and I think we have given adequate strategic capability to this country. It's a work we don't talk about much, but a large percentage of our efforts, scientists and engineers have contributed, as you know, to ensuring strategic security of this country. And that is not a one-step process that, that has happened through building technological capabilities in missiles. When you talk of missiles in material science, in navigation systems, command control, launchers, and uh, the integration process of such a system. You know, beyond the, you know, the generalities, and I'm yeah. sure that uh, you, know, you have um, you know, 50 laboratories, more than 30,000 people working, a, a budget of you know, 5,500 odd crores, yes. so you are humongous, you're huge yes. in terms of you know, the size yes. of operation, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of good work going. But ultimately, in a democracy, yes. uh, you know, people want to see tangible things. Yes. What do we hear about? You know, we hear about, well, Agni 3, disaster. Uh, and, and, and the Parliamentary uh, Review Committee comes down rather heavily on, on, on the RDO. The Defence Minister says, well, you know, we have to learn from our mistakes. Let's not panic. Um, <laughs> what would you say? Okay. Uh, uh, what I would say is quite often uh, it's not uncommon uh, that perceptions are different from reality. First thing I would say. Uh, you see, we, budget-wise, we occupy less than 6% of the defence budget. And almost, I would say, 40% of this is going towards strategic systems because we build, operate, and transfer. About a third goes towards sustaining the skilled manpower, their training, and also building certain basic infrastructure. So really speaking, only a third of the budget is available to span our, our efforts from life science to light combat aircraft uh, kind of a thing. And this spans almost 50 different disciplines. So there is a point that should we continue in these 50 disciplines or could we narrow down? You have something like a thousand different projects under development. No, I, would, uh, I think that's a wrong perception. <laughs> uh, basically, we have less than 20 what we call cabinet committee cleared projects. Mm -hmm. They are large projects like battle tank in production, LCA, light combat aircraft, 
or airborne early warning system projects or the integrated guided missile development projects of this kind which are above 100 crores kind of thing they are all less you know than the years. army seems to be or the armed forces seem to be complaining mm -hmm. that look anytime you want to upgrade or we want to get new state of the art equipment which is crucial to the defense of the country drdo will say no no we can indigenize this and we can produce this and and and, and they don't quite deliver and this is compromising uh, the defense of the country actually <laughs> uh, this is not totally true. Uh, see, till about uh, 2000, if one sees in the 90s, probably there was uh, lesser budget availability due to our own economic constraints. Uh, yes, scientific advisor's opinion could have been sought and scientific advisor could have said that. But if you really see, at least that I am aware of since the year 2000, uh, we have never held back any army, army or for that matter any services acquisition. What we have been pleading with armed forces is that insofar as we develop some systems for them, we have walked an uncharted course. It is quite likely that in spite of our best efforts, after all we cannot operate in a standalone mode. We operate in an environment in which we are placed in the country. I am talking particularly the industrial environment, uh, the kind of technologies to which we get access to, the science base in the country, which is equally important, as you know, it is being increasingly talked about right from Prime Minister to everybody. All these inadequacies also reflect in progressing and pursuing with this kind of a product. And, and we must also see that the cultural environment in the country of industry was essentially that of a licensed production. But you know, that sounds suspicions, uh, suspiciously like... Uh, mm -hmm sort of making excuses. No, you know, the, the proof of the eating is in the pudding. I yeah, mean, you, know, you, you have a battle tank okay. and you know, the armed forces are not very happy with it. It has not been inducted in the scale and in the manner that uh, you know, was expected or, or would <coughs> be hoped for with the kind of investment and time and energy that went into it. Hmm. Of course, the process of you know, arriving at the design and, and, and the building yeah. of the tank has given you great capabilities. But ultimately, you know, the, 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 the citizen of India is concerned and anxious and says, look, what are these guys doing? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's taken so long, and yeah. is the defense of India compromised? And the armed forces said, yes, it is. <laughs> and, okay. and, and we yeah. have a philosophical framework mm. within it which it can be explained. But, you know, uh, defense is one of those holy cows yeah. that, you know, we're all very sort of frightened about, and even in a democracy, reluctant to, to debate and, and go into the nitty-gritty. It's like strategic systems. Strategic systems is, is a euphemism. I mean, it is also, you know, after all, uh, you know, products and, and, and weapons and, and weapon systems and, and accessories uh, that you are creating out of your budget. <laughs> I would like to first uh, dispel one commonly held belief that a DRDO with a limited team of scientists uh, can meet all the demands, all the needs of a wide spectrum of products and sub services of the armed forces. It will not be possible. If uh, one recalls sometime way back in mid-95, the then scientific advisor perhaps uh, had some meeting and charted out a course saying that we should progressively go towards 70 percent self-reliance index. Okay. That was to uh, be by 2005. Okay, he, that was, his and, thinking and, and was... you're at about 30 percent Yeah, now. he has, uh, no, mm -hmm. we are about 40 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is leaving aside the strategic part. Mm -hmm. Now, the, when one looks at it, one must also see that one aspect is how to increase the self-reliance. But increasing self-reliance cannot be the exclusive responsibility of DRDO. It is also linked to the, the industry growth within the country and our decision to source, invest, etc. For example, when you buy a major system from abroad, it is one thing to buy a few numbers and keep, uh, keep quiet and only look into product support. Another thing to set up a manufacturing industry, but then you are changing the pattern. So this has some influence. So what we have been suggesting to the armed forces is that in their domain of uh, planning, for example, if India were to hire, because of the size of the country, about 3,000 tanks, there is always a scope to progressively build a third of that as an indigenous product. In fact, Arjun finds a place in that. The growth is slow initially, I do agree, because of the technology absorption difficulties and as I mentioned that a lot of industries uh, who, have, who are involved in it, sometimes some mistakes do get committed by them in the production process. So, these are being attended to. But qualitatively, it is a different class of product compared to the existing tanks which they have. And there are reasons why this got built as a heavy tank 
to take care of certain kinds of threats mm -hmm. and with certain potentials and capabilities mm -hmm. to on a moving engagement mm -hmm. uh, this is this can be these are meant to be deployed in certain sectors i think the army understands that the question is how do we graduate from a small order of 124 to higher numbers mm -hmm. okay it uh, it is a it is a decision that will be collectively taken between the armed forces and i am very confident over a period of next 10 15 years mm -hmm. this country will build reasonable numbers of that tank mm -hmm. but the biggest advantage in products of this kind is mm -hmm. we have built in the requisite flexibility in its design mm -hmm. to integrate it to networked battlefield of tomorrow mm -hmm. in terms of battle management systems communication integration mm -hmm. value additions of of a kind mm -hmm. countermeasures electronic countermeasures which would not be possible mm -hmm. because that feel for how to do that mm -hmm. is in your hands, mm -hmm. irrespective of whether you develop it or you source mm -hmm. it. And I think that's a great gain. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the light combat aircraft. We'll come to that yeah. right after this break. You're watching a conversation with uh, M. Natarajan, the Secretary in the Ministry of Defense Research and Development, the Director General of DRDO. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. <laughs> Come back to a continuing conversation with M. Natarajan the Director General of DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization. You've just mentioned the light combat aircraft. Uh, that's been virtually two decades almost uh, in, in, in the making. And um, cost overruns, delays, um, you've said that it, you know, it'll end up costing, what, about 100, 120 crores, crores and, and, and new weapons will cost 200 crores, so it's still good value for money. Yes. Um, but uh, that's frustration. It's sort of, it's the red herring that everybody's beating you up with and saying, look, I mean, this is just taking so long. It isn't working. It isn't happening. How much longer do you need? Okay. Let, let's look at the ground reality in regard to aircraft development in the country. You see, after the HF-24, no fighter aircraft got developed in this country. Mm -hmm. There was a long discontinuity for almost 30 years. But DRDO the the, the set, set, set itself a deadline. There's a yes. timeline. With any product, uh, you know, you, you might well, you will probably be obsolete by the time you create a product unless yeah. you stick to certain timelines, time frames. You know, the competition is, is, is moving very fast. You're not, work, not creating something in isolation. It's not like planning a trip to the moon. I mean, you know, if you're five years late, it doesn't matter too much. No, <laughs> I, I beg to differ there. Mm -hmm. In fact, you see, there are, there are different ways of looking at the development of the product. Mm -hmm. This word uh, obsolescence is used too frequently mm -hmm. simply because it relates to long, uh, a little longer time for development. Mm -hmm. If you perceive, I mean, if you know that development elsewhere, for example, the F-22 Raptor, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of technological complexities mm -hmm. beyond F-16, F-18, mm -hmm. is what LCA is to India in, after the HF-24 in terms of complexities. Now, what is important is these aircrafts or platforms are going to have a life of close to 30 years. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at it from a 30-year point of view, possibly instead of a 30-year, we, we still have a life of 25 years or 27 years. Mm -hmm. Now, answering your question about obsolescence, that doesn't happen for following reasons. Mm -hmm. See, when, when we conceived the aircraft, mm -hmm. we, we did not plan for the extent of composites which we have now introduced. Mm -hmm. Open architecture avionics have been introduced into this. Mm -hmm. but the multi-mode radar has been integrated into this, not just the lightning pod. Now, the capability to integrate these systems gives us capability. Ten years down the road, active electronically scanned array radar can be introduced into this. So, what it, kind of... An air-to-air -air missile is being uh, developed for this. So, in a sense, it is. You know, what you're saying is that While you're, you're, you're it, continuing yeah. research and the yeah. product is evolving yeah. even yeah. as it is being delayed. Yeah. But and we are adding value. We are adding value technologically uh -huh. to the product so that it stays at, as close to the cutting edge as practically feasible. But, 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 but surely there's a, there's a projection, there's a deadline, there's a target, yes. and that target is in a constantly pushed back. So what kind of target are you now setting yeah. for the aircraft to be a, you know, a, a prototype to be ready that the armed forces are comfortable with? Yeah. And then you've, you've raised the very important issue of its transfer to industry, and we'll yeah. come to that in a minute. So what kind of time frame in are you willing to... Un unlike in the tank case, mm -hmm. where a lot of work got done in DRDO, and then post-development we are transferring, in the case of LCA, a lot of activities are concurrently going on with HAL. That's a sea, there's a sea change in terms of our approach to the problem. As a result, as a part of the development process, we, have, we are building eight uh, pre-production models. And we, have, we are grateful to Air Force for having given us order for 20 to initial operational clearance. Mm -hmm. Now, 
we are planning to get the initial operational clearance duly certified mm -hmm. in these aircrafts mm -hmm. by about 2009. Mm -hmm. Okay, even if it overshoots by another year mm -hmm. or 18 months, mm -hmm. what, what is important here is most of the avionics, mm -hmm. the sensors and the prescribed weapon package of mm -hmm. the Air Force, mm -hmm. which is out of the current inventory of theirs, would all have got integrated. Mm -hmm. because. We have ex exhaustive test facilities created, mm -hmm. simulation facilities created, where unlike in the tank here, mm -hmm. there every time we have to run to Rajasthan mm -hmm. to test it, mm -hmm. we, we, are, we can do pre-test, we are doing as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And your risk element in the final integration is kept to the barest minimum. Mm -hmm. Now this is already evident mm -hmm. in the way we are happening. But you must appreciate one very important issue. You see, it, we, since we have not gone through such an exhaustive fighter development, mm -hmm. Expanding the flight envelope to the ultimate mm -hmm. is a challenge mm -hmm. uh, of this kind of an aircraft because flight control loss will have to be mm -hmm. upgraded progressively. If there are many versions of flight control. Mm -hmm. Those are being incorporated. Mm -hmm. But you can see the, cha see the beauty of this aircraft. Mm -hmm. We have had 600 flights, close to 600 flights and not with one in any incident. Mm -hmm. This itself shows to the integrity of the way mm -hmm. things have synergized. Mm -hmm. I am very hopeful, even if there is a delay of an year or two, suppose 2010 becomes 2012, mm -hmm. even then the Air Force will get top class aircraft where mm -hmm. in, in a payload, an aircraft weighing 9 tons mm -hmm. is going to carry almost a 50 percent by weight of a payload, another 4 tons payload. So and it uh, will be so a cutting edge aircraft. So what can you offer by way of inspiring confidence? Yeah. Uh, you have given us some examples of yeah. uh, you know, how you have approach this somewhat differently, yeah. uh, particularly the, the interface yes. with industry. But, uh, you know, again, with, with, all the, with all the fear, suspicion and doubt and yes. pessimism about DRDO, what is it that, that you can say to the citizen of India, say that things are now happening differently yeah. and it isn't going to be, you know, we, we finished, you know, 50 odd years of development and we've built this infrastructure and we've created knowledge and experience <laughs> and all these wonderful things. But, you know, the bottom line is, yes. Uh, you know, people want to see a product and, and particularly something as glamorous as, as your own combat aircraft in the sky that, that, that you have developed. Uh, what assurances can you offer that this time it's going to be different? Yes, very simple. See, even before we have integrated everything into the LCA, you can see Sukhoi avionics, uh, radar uh, warner, mission computers are India built, integrated into the Sukhoi plant at Russia. This would not happen could not have happened unless for the efforts in this direction. Mm -hmm. This itself is a pointer mm -hmm. that an advanced uh, heavy combat aircraft designer mm -hmm. is willing to accept your solution of mission computer and radar warner. Mm -hmm. I think this should reassure mm -hmm. the nation mm -hmm. about the professional competence mm -hmm. of this thing. Mm -hmm. The question of capability building as I mentioned mm -hmm. to you, while we are what started off as a one program not known to many mm -hmm. is no longer one. We have an LCA Air Force, mm -hmm. we have an LCA Navy going on concurrently. We have a trainer version of the Air Force mm -hmm. and we have also a trainer version of the, mm -hmm. or the Navy. Mm -hmm. And we have potentials for taking the same aircraft in the shortest span of time into a supersonic jet trainer beyond the Hawk. Mm -hmm. So the Air Force is going to derive mm -hmm. multiple advantages of this program. Mm -hmm. And progressively over the next 10 years, mm -hmm. there are potentials for building what I call even medium combat aircraft mm -hmm. of about let's say 20 ton uh, class of weight. Now, this will fit in very well within the overall acquisition of uh, Air Force, mm -hmm. notwithstanding Sukhois, because in the total strength of 1000 or 1200 mm -hmm. aircraft, mm -hmm. this, I, this Tejas mm -hmm. will carve out a segment for itself mm -hmm. in terms of light combat aircraft for Air Force, Navy, mm -hmm. trainer versions, mm -hmm. uh, the, and also possible medium combat. We will come to more of that in a moment. You are watching a conversation with M. Natarajan, Director General of the Defence Research and Development Organisation. We will be right back after a short break. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to a continuing conversation with uh, M. Natarajan, Secretary, Research and Development in the Ministry of Defence. Uh, you have been resisting uh, attempts at uh, or, or pleas and, 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 and there have been um, several recommendations, uh, you know, the Kelkar uh, Committee and in the Kelkar Report, uh, Mr. Dixit when he was uh, National Security Advisor, you know, called for an audit, yes. a public audit of DRDO and that isn't happening. Why are you resisting this? No, I think the, uh, the again the perceptions are wrong. We have not resisted. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. we have had discussions with the previous RM. Mm -hmm. He himself took a number of reviews mm -hmm. and we left it to him. Then he recommended to us, mm -hmm. 
He said you can make a suggestion, he will examine it. He had a clear name of a committee. Mm -hmm. That committee is starting the work now. Mm -hmm. So I can assure you that committee will complete the report by end of this year. Mm -hmm. It is headed by Dr. P. Ramarao, mm -hmm. former Science and Technology Secretary, mm -hmm. with some members. Mm -hmm. What we were keen was that this composition of the committee should include members from the industry. So we have a CIA mm -hmm. rep, mm -hmm. members from the public sector, mm -hmm. somebody who had a past chairman, etc. Mm -hmm. So that there is a wider representation in this. Mm -hmm. Number one, one first point of the Kilkar committee. Mm -hmm. Two other points of Kilkar committee we already have implemented, mm -hmm. I want to tell you. One is what we did, we did an introspection of our own activities mm -hmm. and we also felt that over the past so many years, we perhaps, you know, we could have gone and told the services we, we need not handle these projects. Mm -hmm. Maybe we said, you know, we, we thought we are doing a favor by handling the project. Mm -hmm. Take for example a generator set. Mm -hmm. There is no need for us to do any longer generator set. Mm -hmm. After all, we are sourcing it, then we are, mm -hmm. maybe we are, uh, you know, putting in an acoustic shield and giving them in a manner acceptable. So what we have done is, in the new defense procurement procedure 2006, mm -hmm. there are two dispensations mm -hmm. which, which has been agreed to by MOD, mm -hmm. uh, which will facilitate services considerably, mm -hmm. that that which can be comfortably sourced from the industry, mm -hmm. uh, which even if they need some technology they can take from us, mm -hmm. They can directly go to the industry. They need not come through DRDO. I think it's a very important step. Right? In a sense, that yeah. is sort of you know cleaning up the system so no, that uh, you can have far greater focus yeah. on the things yeah. that you do. That, that's precisely. Uh, but when what someone does an audit, it's, yeah. it's not only looking at sort of you uh, know of course looking at the financial efficiency of how <coughs> money is being used, your administrative structures, and and, and what have you. But as, as someone who has spent, uh, in, you, you've been with, with DRDO since 1970, that's yes. 36 yes. years with the organization, it's yes, sort of please. in your lifeblood <laughs> in a sense. But what is a yardstick, yeah. a measurable, identifiable yardstick of uh, success, mm. of achievement, beyond the rhetoric of, you know, capacity building and developing expertise, which is all, of course, important and yes. valuable. But what, what measure, what yardstick would you like to see used uh, uh, to say that, well, the RDO is doing a great job. You see, the force multiplier effect of uh, uh, all the efforts mm -hmm. is, is, not a, is not a one step uh, assessment. Mm -hmm. In fact, we, ha we have commissioned a study through National Council of Applied Economic Research mm -hmm. uh, basically to list down the parameters of judging an R&D. Mm -hmm. The first part has been done. So now we are going to give, go into the series, second part. You tell us as the, a scientist who's yeah, working scientist, it intuitively, because, I uh, mean it, it may not be yet sort of you know studied yeah, and evolved, yeah. but when you look back in your uh, you know 36 years, I, I clearly, what you say is that you know, this is our achievement, we've done a great job. Yeah. I, I would clearly say that we have spun a lot of activities in the electronic warfare because of the electronic war into the electronic industry. Such a as? large number of small and medium industries for example, today there is a company called Astra Microwave mm -hmm. who is doing exceedingly well in uh, uh, trans uh, uh, transmitter receiver modules. Mm -hmm. Of such standards, working only with DRDO, where they are internationally recognized as a capable company to build transmitter receivers. Mm -hmm. There are companies who have worked with us to build launcher systems, the LNT as you know, mm -hmm. Tata Power. I am sure these companies tomorrow can bid for launchers for rockets and missiles anywhere, any project in the world, mm -hmm. you know, radars similarly, we have involved some of these companies, mm -hmm. if not as an individual company in a consortium form mm -hmm. there. Now these skills and capabilities are in the process of being exploited. Mm -hmm. See the mere fact that they have a capability now, mm -hmm. but it will translate into business over a period. Is there an area that you can identify yeah. where you feel that at a global level, yes. you have <coughs> been at the cutting edge? You know, we look at, you know, we talk about India's cutting edge uh, skills in the service sector. In R&D, in the defense uh, industry, is there a cutting edge field that you can say, yes, this has been our contribution? In the defense field, yeah. yeah. What would that if be? You, you see, if a you product, see a technology, a design, a uh, what? You, you, you see, for example, <coughs> many activities which we have done in the life science area are something very unique. Such in as. terms of mm -hmm. agriculture in high high altitude, mm -hmm. though agriculture agriculture I mean there is a ministry for agriculture, but we we created a situation where today of the 1,100 tons of food I mean uh, vegetable products required there, almost 50 percent is grown mm -hmm. through technology transfer from DRDO to the local mm -hmm. community forming there. 
and as a result the soldiers are happy i mean they get the food what they want mm -hmm. material science area we have done a lot of good work mm -hmm. we have we have done some very useful work in the fuel cell areas mm -hmm. in fact i had mentioned this in some university area but you must appreciate that we are not a basic science people mm -hmm. we do science incidental to an application need mm -hmm. so the basic science we are dependent on universities mm -hmm. a lot of things we we have we have developed definite capabilities in system engineering system conceptualization system design system engineering you have you complained uh, and you know when you yeah. talked about universities that the brain drain is uh, severely affecting yes. uh, many of your research projects <coughs> and i think you'd mentioned this specifically in the context of missile development when you were talking when there was an, you know you were explaining mm -hmm. uh, the, the difficulties and and with with agni 3 and in that context you had uh, commented on this how serious uh, is this uh, problem uh, not just in terms of obviously people go away there's a, mm -hmm. there's, there's a turnover issue but are there issues of leakage of secrets for example or of processes that you're on you know you're you're you're, you're practicing how, how how confidential people, people is going the away. process no i don't think uh, uh, the engineer leaving um, diario and going is a matter of any serious security concern uh, but uh, it's a, it's a concern of a different type that what happens is to train a, a, a system engineer it takes 10 years mm -hmm. you know take a, to train a system manager to take decisions on important things where there are after all all are multidisciplinary projects it needs about 15 years of effort it's not going to change radically by simply switching over to private sector there also mm -hmm. continuity is required in all these areas there all we are saying is that these bright boys and girls mm -hmm. even if they leave today the attrition rate is varying between 15 to 25% depending upon the location of the laboratory and the type of subject mm -hmm. if That's they every year uh, every year that's a very high figure, isn't at, it? At a lower level. Mm -hmm. It's not at a higher level. It's basically in the B, scientist B, C mm -hmm. category, a joining category. About four, 500 people join us, and you can say after two years. After they, they all live only after spending two to three years mm -hmm. because they acquire a domain knowledge, and there is a market value mm -hmm. for them, and mm -hmm. they get four times the pay or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we are interested is if they, can, if they, if they go to industries mm -hmm. which are contributing to the defense or even atomic energy or space efforts, then this will definitely add to the scientific capability of the country considerably mm -hmm. and the technological capability which can be gainfully mm -hmm. utilized by the country. Mm -hmm. I think the force multiplier effect will happen, mm -hmm. but if they go to this uh, IT sector, mm -hmm. which are back-end jobs, mm -hmm. uh, yes, the companies can still use them, uh, but if they progressively build the engineering type of activities, they can use them. Tell me that, yeah. uh, uh, you know, 36 uh, odd years with um, DRDO, a long career as a scientist. At the end of your tenure, yes. and uh, what is the one thing that you would like to have uh, seen achieved that will give you personally uh, the greatest fulfillment? I mean, I don't know if the, you know, if the light combat aircraft will be ready, uh, mm -hmm. if, if you know, the Agni-3 will have its successful flight by then. Uh, it, hopefully it will. Yes, it but will. What, is that, well. what is that one major achievement that you want to leave behind as your legacy? As my legacy. Yes. I certainly want to see the LCA succeed. Mm -hmm. Not only LCA, major platforms should be within our reach. Mm -hmm. At least a portion of the platforms. Mm -hmm. And we would have developed sufficient capability to in integrate sensors mm -hmm. and would have also done some very good work in sensors. We have done some good work in fiber optics gyro, mm -hmm. ring laser gyros, mm -hmm. and we will be integrating. These are very important developments so that you can be free of any international pressures on navigation equipment. Thank you, Mr. Natarajan. That has been a great, great pleasure and a great, great experience. Thank you very much. Sir.